This is Colin Selleck of Binghamton University. This video lecture is on planar kinetics, work and energy. It's from the book Dynamics by R.C. Hibbler, chapters 18.1 through 18.4. Today's objectives, you will be able to define the various ways a force and couple do work and apply the principle of work and energy to a rigid body. Activities include some applications. We'll define kinetic energy, the work of a force or couple, the principle of work and energy, and then we'll do some problem solving. Here you see a concrete mixer with two motors, uh, one down here and one up here. Each has a gear that engages the larger gear you see here. Uh, the work of the torque or moment developed by the driving gears of the two motors on the concrete mixer is transformed into the rotational kinetic energy of the drum. So if you know the motor characteristics, you can find the rotational velocity of the mixing drum. So here you see a soil compactor. Uh, you see the frame here, and then there's a roller here. Now the work done by the compactor's engine is transformed into the translational kinetic energy of the frame and the translational and rotational energy of the roller. So the frame is translating, so it has kinetic energy, and the roller is both rotating and translating. It also has kinetic energy. So here in blue you see a rigid body. It has some rotational velocity, and the mass center has some velocity. Well, the kinetic energy of this body is one half the mass of the body times the velocity of the mass center squared plus one half mass moment or inertia about the mass center times omega squared. This term is familiar to you from particle kinetics. Uh, this is the kinetic energy due to rotation. Now, several simplifications can occur. One of them is translation. So if there's no angular velocity, then the kinetic energy, of course, is just one half the mass times the velocity of the mass center squared. We also can have rotation about a fixed axis. So the fixed axis is here at this point O. So we can write that the kinetic energy of this body is uh, one half the mass of the body times the velocity of the mass center squared plus one half mass molar inertia about the mass center times omega squared. But in this case, the velocity of the mass center is equal to rg omega, where rg is this vector right here. So then we substitute that in here, and we can write that t is equal to 1 half the mass times r sub g omega quantity squared plus 1 half mass moment of inertia about g times omega squared. And I can rewrite this as one half times I sub G plus M R sub G squared omega squared. We may recognize this term right here. That's the parallel axis theorem. That is equal to I sub O. So the kinetic energy for a rotation about a fixed axis is one half mass moment of inertia about the point of rotation O times omega squared. So recall that work done by a force can be written as the integral of f dot dr. So as a scalar, I can write this as the work done by a force is the integral of f cosine theta ds. So in this case, r is a three-dimensional vector. Right here, s is a distance, a measurement of distance. So we take the component of the force in that direction, multiply them together, and we can get the work done by the force F. So on the top part of this picture here, you see a rigid body in blue, and it has some weight W, and it moves in the direction measured positive upwards. Well, you know that the work done by this weight is equal to minus the weight times delta Y. So if delta Y is measured positive upwards, the weight is pointed downwards, so the work done by weight has this negative sign in it. And that makes sense. If I'm going to raise a weight by delta y, I have to put work into it. It costs energy, so therefore the work is negative. And recall that the work done by a spring is minus one half k times s2 squared minus s1 squared. k is a spring constant. Now recall that s2 and s1 are measured from the unstretched position of the spring. And don't forget that it has a minus sign as well. Now there are some external forces that do no work. 
For instance, these reactions that Dix supports do no work because their displacement at the point of application is zero. So you can see that in the instance here where you have a disc rolling without slip. At this point right here, you know that's the instantaneous center, so it is not moving. Therefore, the frictional force does no work. The normal force and the weight, of course, do no work either because they are perpendicular to the displacement vector. Now here's something new. We're going to talk about the work of a couple or a moment. A couple is a moment. So here you see a rigid body. There's this couple being applied about this point O over some angle d theta. When a body subjected to a couple experiences general plane motion, the two couple forces do work only when the body undergoes rotation. So I could apply a couple to a body that's bolted to the floor and it would do no work because the body wouldn't rotate. So the couple only does work if the body is rotating. And if that's the case, then the work done by the moment or the couple is equal to the integral of the couple over d theta. So that would be from theta 1 to theta 2. And remember, theta has to be measured in radians. So if the moment is constant, then this equation reduces to the work done by a moment is the constant moment integrated from theta 1 to theta 2 over d theta. So basically, if the moment is constant, the work done by a moment is the moment times theta 2 minus theta 1. The work is positive if the moment and theta are measured in the same direction. So now we'll move into section 18.4, the principle of work and energy. Now you may remember this from kinetics of a particle, but the kinetic energy at state 1 plus the summation of all the work done between states 1 and 2 is equal to the kinetic energy at state 2. So in the case of general planar motion, the kinetic energy will have both translational and rotational components. And the work will have possibly moments acting over some rotational distance or some forces acting over some distance. If this is a scalar equation, you can apply it to a system of rigid bodies by summing contributions from all bodies. So let's look at an example. Here we have a 50 kilogram wheel. It's subjected to a force of 50 newtons at an angle of 30 degrees. A radius of gyration about its mass center is 0.3 meters. Find the angular velocity of the wheel after it has rotated 10 revolutions. The wheel starts from rest and rolls without slipping. So since this involves distance, in this case, you know, we're moving 10 revolutions, so that's a distance. You can use the principle of work and energy, and that's kind of a key. When you see a problem that involves forces and distances, using work energy is probably the quickest way to go. I mean, you could solve this problem by summing forces in the x and finding out the acceleration in the x direction, and then using the kinematics of a rolling disk to solve the problem. But work and energy would get you the solution much quicker. So let's draw a free body diagram of the wheel. So here we have the wheel, and there's a force, P, at 30 degrees. There's a normal force, there's a frictional force, and there's the weight. And here's a better image of it. You see the normal force, frictional force, the weight, and the applied force, P, at an angle of 30 degrees. So first, let's look at the work term. Uh, we know that the applied force P does work. So the work done by P, that's going to be equal to the component of P in the X direction times the distance that it moves. So the component of P in the X direction will be P cosine of theta. Now this needs to be multiplied by the distance that the center of the wheel moves in 10 revolutions. So I'll call that D. So now we need to figure out what D is. D is the amount that the center of the wheel moves in 10 revolutions. So in one revolution, the wheel travels around its circumference. So one revolution would be pi times the diameter is 0.8 meters. So in one revolution, the center of the wheel moves pi times 0.8. Now we have 10 revolutions we multiply by 10, so that's equal to D. So D is equal to 8 pi. So the work done by P is p cosine theta times 8 pi. We substitute in the numbers, p is equal to 50, theta is equal to 30, and the work done by p is 1088 
newton meter now let's do the kinetic energy of the wheel well, the wheel starts from rest so the initial state the kinetic energy is zero now in state two the wheel is both translating and rotating right the center o is translating and the wheel is rotating so the kinetic energy at state two is equal to one half the mass times the velocity of the center of the wheel squared plus one half mass moment of inertia about g times omega squared and here we'll do a little kinematics you know that the velocity of the wheel is equal to r times omega right the wheel moves without slipping the center of the wheel moves r omega so we can make that substitution so the kinetic energy at state two is one half the mass times r omega quantity squared plus one half mass moment of inertia about g times omega squared so we'll plug in the numbers here, the mass is 50 kilograms, the radius is 0 0.4, omega is unknown, S squared plus one half. Now I about g, we were given the radius of gyration k, so the equation is I about g is equal to m k squared. So again, this will be the mass times k squared, which is 0.3 meters times omega squared. So this simplifies to 6.25 omega squared. Recall from our previous slide that the work done was 1088 newton meters. So now let's apply our equation T1 plus the work done between states 1 and 2 is equal to kinetic energy at state 2. So initial kinetic energy is 0 plus the work done which is 10 88 newton meters that is equal to 6.25 omega squared and you solve for omega it's 13.2 radians per second so here's another problem the combined weight of the load and this platform is 200 pounds the center of gravity is located at g a couple moment is applied to link a b at this location the system is at rest when theta is zero degrees and the value of the couple moment is 900 foot-pounds. Find the angular velocity of links A, B, and C, D when theta is equal to 60. Again, since the problem involves distance, right, we're talking about a change in theta, it's best to use work energy to solve this problem. So first, let's do the work done by the external loads. The external load, do we have the weight, 200 pounds of the cargo on the platform? So the equation for work done by a weight is minus the weight times delta y. Well, the mass center, we have to figure out how far it is lifted. And this link has a four feet length as well as a b times theta. So it raises it four sine of theta. So the work done by the weight is minus 200 pounds times four sine of theta. So the work done by the weight is minus 692.8 foot-pounds. Now let's do the work due to the moment. Now this moment is constant, so the equation is the work done by the moment is equal to the moment times theta. The theta is measured in radians. So the moment is 900 foot-pounds times theta, which is 60 degrees, but you make sure you change it to radians multiplied by pi over 180. So the work done by the moment is 942.5 Pounds. Therefore, the work done between states 1 and 2 is minus 692.8 plus 942.5. It equals 249.7 foot-pounds. So now let's look at the kinetic energy of the situation. Now these links are both rotating at the same rate, so the cargo is going to undergo pure translation only, right? The velocity of this point C and the velocity of this point A of both 4 times omega. So therefore, the platform and its cargo are not rotating. So kinetic energy. So initially, the kinetic energy, it started from rest, so initially the kinetic energy is zero. At state two, the kinetic energy is one half the mass times the velocity of the mass center squared. Now remember, it's not rotating. So the platform and the load are not rotating, so omega is zero. So the rotational kinetic energy is zero. Now the velocity of G is the same as the velocity of A and it's the same as the velocity of C. So we can write that 
the kinetic energy at stake two is one half the mass, which is 200 divided by g times 4 omega squared. And that reduces to 49.69 omega squared. So now we can apply our principle of work and energy, T1 plus the work done between states 1 and 2 is equal to T2. T1 is 0. The work done we calculated to be 249.7 foot-pounds. That equals 49.69 omega squared. So omega is equal to 2.24 radians per second. This concludes chapters 18.1 through 18.4, planar kinetics, work and energy. Up next is chapter 18.5, planar kinetics, conservation of energy.